Hello, welcome back to my bench. Today we're going to take a look at this. It's another one of those little Samlex um, power supplies. Uh, one of the guys, uh, one of my viewers saw me fix one of these and I believe it was pretty simple. I think it was just one of these little 4.3 ohm resistors back here blew up. Um, this one not so, quite so much. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, I figured you know what the heck uh, I'll fix it, but um, I did. It's it's fixed. I didn't even bother wanting to record it because I thought I'd already done that. Been there, got the T-shirt, but not so much. So I'll show you what was wrong with this one. The resistor, the 4.3 ohm, it was blown. In order of appearance of blown, we'll go with a capacitor. If you look at it, it blew the entire plug right out of the bottom of it. This is now a fancy way of making no connection. It is just open. Uh, another capacitor, which was this one back here. Uh, which on the schematic would be the one between these two little capacitors it would be right there that little um, what is that 10 microfarads at 50 volts right there okay that one is very high ESR like something like 25 ohms or something like that another capacitor this one is 4.7, uh, which is down here, right there in that uh, in that position, and that would be where was it? Um, I think at C18, and C18 would be right there, and it is about 40 ohms ESR. Um, and of course when I got it these two transistors right here which are 2SC 2625's they are three terminal jumpers they shorted everything to everything this is a 72EW-200 it's two diodes back to back which would be right here and these are they're showing okay as far as the, the diodes go they're shockies but it's also leaking uh, A1, A2 to uh, to anode or yeah cathode I'm sorry and so there it leaks high resistance um, this transistor now let's do this first um, once I got those parts all changed and replaced the the resistor, the capacitor, this capacitor, this capacitor, this capacitor, I got voltage. However, I did not get a regulated voltage at any kind of load. You could put uh, 50 millivolt milliwatts milliamps on it, and it would just drop down to nothing. So I ordered and got in. One of this, this is a KA7500B, um, which is a PWM and voltage regulator, and it is right there. Uh, I got very strange looking output of it um, on right here and right there, and uh, it wouldn't regulate anything. So I got a new one of these in, put it in right there, right there. And um, then I could regulate up to about uh, 200 mils, 3, 250 mils, and then I found this. This is uh, Q3, which if we look over here is right there. Q3 is a 2SC1815. I measured this in circuit. It looked like it was doing fine. I didn't think about it. 
blew a whole lot of time trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing and then I finally said tell you what let's get out the little magic box and start checking parts so I got the little magic box and I plugged it into here and we're gonna see what it says if you look at it it says can you get it without glare uh, yeah, right there. I don't know what that thing seeing. Okay, uh, two diodes, front to back, and uh, a diode on three or something. I'm not sure what exactly that means. That's not a transistor. What that's trying to tell me is there's a diode from emitter to collector and a diode from uh. Emitter, base to collector, emitter to collector, and no base is what that's saying. Look good in circuit, does not look, does not work. So I replaced that with 1815, which I have a box of, and put it in there, and now it works. I'm going to take my little tester up here. It's a little homebrew. Uh, 3 amp, um, 3 amp at 12 volts anyway, uh, uh, electronic load that I think I got off of EV blog a long time ago. Anyway, um, we'll hook it up to the outputs here. We'll plug this thing in. And turn it on. All right. All right. We're gonna take this little guy, little whatever this thing is called, camera, and we're gonna look at the right there. Now you can see I got 13.9 volts at zero amps, no current. Let's turn it up. There is 270 mils. Still 13.9. There's a half an amp. There is one amp. There's two amps. Still good. There's about as high as I can go. 3.8 amps. About 3.8 amps and it's still holding at 13.6 volts. So, let's take the load away. Blink, 13.9. So, it worked. I think I recorded that. Yep, okay. So, we got a working power supply again. The whole idea behind this video was, yes, those resistors, those little 4.3s go out. But check these guys here, if you don't have any regulation. Um, and make sure you check them out of circuit with some sort of a tester. Guys, these things are less than $17 and they'll save you so much effort. Are they perfectly accurate as far as everything else goes? Like reading coils and resistors and that kind of stuff? No. For capacitors now, I use one of these. It does a heck of a lot better job and it's more accurate. However, just to, ch to check out transistors, diodes, uh, caps in you know, approximate, this is what you want. These things are a lifesaver. So, anyhow, it's working. Seal it all up, send it back to the guy. Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for uh, watching. And uh, if you uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little heart so you know when I'm doing some more of these. See you later.